Hi, I'm Christy Collins. I'm an author. I'm the author of The Price of Two Sparrows. So The Price of Two Sparrows is about Heiko. He's an ornithologist who decides to object to a new development in a neighbouring suburb because, for environmental reasons. And then uh, he finds out that the development is a mosque. And so this um, plays out across the community. It's got a, quite a broad view, a sort of 360 view of the community in the area um, <clears throat> as it plays out over a number of years. Uh, the first uh, seed for the novel was um, in 2012 I was in the United States on a program, a study program about uh, religious pluralism and I was at a backyard barbecue and heard this story about a mosque that uh, they were trying to build there um, being stopped by some things that had been posted online about some migratory birds that might be obstructed by the mosque in this particular location that they'd purchased. And I thought, gosh, that's strange. These, these things had been posted anonymously and I, I just I couldn't get my head around who that person was who, who might post that anonymously and then later just take it down not having said anything about it. And it seemed such a strange story and a strange thing to do. It seemed strange to me that birds would be affected by this sort of particular one building. Anyway, so that sort of got stuck in my head, so I'd been thinking a lot about that. And then another seed, I think, is um, earlier in my career, I worked um, with a professor who later turned out to be making up all this data. And we didn't find out till 10 years later. I saw it on the news here in Australia. I'd been working in the Netherlands. So it was a big story then it broke. It's still a, sort of a big fraud story in the research community. And it just, it completely changed how I thought about how my career had started as a, as a researcher. And, um, yeah, so that's another part of it. So who is this person who'd be willing to sort of change their data and why, or, or make up data and why? So that's another big part of, of the idea for the book. Um, yeah, so I hadn't been focusing so much on the architecture when I started and my um, supervisor said to me, you know, it'd be great if we talked a little bit more about what the, what's the mosque going to look like? And um, yeah, so I started, I started working on an architect character and, and the architecture of the mosque itself. So the architect character, I never considered having a, a male, it was always a female architect. Um, but a really lovely thing was that when I went looking for um, a picture of a mosque uh, that would be like what I would think the architecture would be, I discovered this uh, particular mosque that had never been built uh, that was entered into a competition. Uh, to build the central mosque in Pristina and I just loved it. It's just, it just was modern and beautiful and when I looked it up uh, the architect for it was a, a woman, a Turkish woman who lived in the Netherlands which was where the book was set at the time and I was headed there for research anyway so I got a chance to actually speak to her so I went and met her in Rotterdam and talked to her and she just lit up when she talked about architecture and she was so excited and engaged and what she really understood was how buildings shape how we interact with each other and it just struck me how much what she was doing was like what I was trying to do in terms of sort of exploring what is the place of a mosque in in a modern city and and what is the place of religion in a modern city and yeah that was a really exciting time in the research. It's my first novel. I had a novella a few years ago. Um, it's called The End of Seeing which was published with Seizure for the Viva la Novella Prize. I think I write because when I was a kid books seemed so magical and I just wanted to be part of creating that for, for, for myself and for other people as well, I think. just seemed a magical thing to be able to be involved in. Yes, I think so. I think I really wanted to be a writer as a child. I think um, as you come into your 20s you're thinking more about how am I going to pay the rent and so it wasn't something I was immediately working on, <clears throat> but it is something I returned to in my late 20s and, and I've been working on since then, so for a good 15 years. Um, the first thing I ever wrote. <clears throat> Before I could write, I used to write letters in a, in a, um, in a row and take it to my mum and say, what does this say? What does this say? And she said, it doesn't say anything. Just over and over again, poor mum. <laughs> yeah, 2020 was challenging for a lot of reasons. I was writing, I was working on The Price of Two Sparrows and it had been set in the Netherlands. Um, and so I had to rewrite it to set it in Australia that my publisher wanted that. And um, so that was a very clear brief and I had a very good skeleton um, to sort of, to flip it. And so I think I was lucky with that. I think that was something very clear to work on. Um, I would have found it quite hard to generate new work, but this was, uh, yeah, a good time to focus and a good way to, yeah, get a little bit extra time before work and things like that to, to work on it. So it was a challenging year, but because my work was so specific and already laid out, I think I was a bit lucky with that. Mostly just editing, so rewriting this book and editing, yeah. Yeah, and I have a new project on the go, but that was mostly on the back burner last year. 
No, I'm not a full-time writer. I have um, a job four days a week. It's only four days a week since September last year. Before that, it was full-time, um, yeah, full-time work. Uh, but I love having my Wednesdays now to be able to write, uh, to be able to write. And otherwise, I write before work usually. Yes, I mean, since COVID, it's been a little later, <laughs> so I can get up a little later and still with not no commute. Um, yeah, work in the mornings and then start start work at nine or sometimes ten. My work's pretty flexible. This is a lovely book, uh, The Late Sonata. I love uh, short books and novellas. And this is a book about a gentleman who's going through the papers of his recently dead wife and um, discovering some things that he didn't know about his life. And it, it was a really good read for 2020 because I think a lot of us got a chance to sometimes go through our own papers, but certainly to reflect a bit on our lives. Um, and this was a, a good match with that. And it's a, it's a lovely, elegant uh, novella, which I, I really enjoyed last year. I really, really loved um, Ellen Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables as a child. That, uh, I think that that has been the sort of most lasting book from my childhood that I just, I, I feel like I still think about it now. It's, um, it's not that I've reread it, but I do give it to my nieces. And um, yeah, it's just a wonderful book about a wonderful character. It's just such an enduring book. I'm writing a novel about uh, virtual reality and travel. Um, and I've been working on that since 2017, so it's been sort of on the go, on and off since then. And it's just such a delight to be able to be back to it now this one's published, uh, to be able to be back to it and, and working on it, not full time, but, but all of my writing time. It's such a, such a privilege to be back in that universe. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's been lovely.